the previous video we have seen about the logical clock and leopard clock and in this video we are dealing with vector clock so before starting with the vector clock let us recall the limitation of the uh, leopard clock why vector clock came into existence so the uh, main limitation of the leopard clock was the partial clock let's see partial clock if there are three processes p1 p2 p3 and if there are three events in p1 two events in p2 and let's say three events in p3 let us name them p1 1 p1 2 p1 3 p2 1 p2 2 let us name them p3 1 p3 2 p3 3 now let's suppose the time step uh, if the time step of this process is p1 Two, three, and just that this is the same. Two, three, one, two, three. Uh, if you want to refer how this time stamp came, you can refer to our previous video of logical clock and leopard clock. Now I am skipping this and I am coming to the limitation. Even though we can see that the time stamp of e one one is less than e three two. we cannot say there is a uh, happen correlation between these two because of the partial order that is in leopard clock if a is happen before b then we can very well say that c of a will be less than c of b but if c of a is happen before c of b Then we cannot say that A is happened for B. This is not true every time. This is the partial order and the main limitation of the leopard clock. So to avoid this, uh, there came the vector clock. In vector clock, there is a total order. Let's see about it. In vector clock, a vector is maintained for each process such that. Let P I P I be a vector of process I, and C I be the time step of the corresponding process. Uh, first of all, it seems to, it seems to be a tedious, but let's understand with an example. It will be very clear to you. Now, see this example. Uh, there are three processes: P one, P two, P three, and P one one, P one two, P one three, are, and P one four are corresponding to the events of P one. These are corresponding events of P two. P2 and these are for P3. And the messages are between P22 and P21. E23, E14, E2, E3, 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 The rules are same. When we move successively, we implement the clock by one. And when a message is passed from a event of one process to another event of another process, we implement. We see the maximum of both the two clocks and then implement by one. Let's see by the example. Let's start from bottom. The clock for this will be zero for process one, zero for process two, and one will be the clock for process three. This is the successive movement. Here zero will be for this zero, and we implement it by one, so it will be two. Another clock for E three three. We have a successive movement. So this will be zero, this will be zero, and this will be three. This we have maintained for process P. Now, now let's come to the process P two. Here. Uh, there is a no message passing between e1 one and e3 one, so the time step for the first process will be zero, and the time step for the second process will be one, and time step for the third process will be three. Now, for e2 two, there is a successive movement from e2 one as well as there is a message passed from e1 two. So the first beat uh, of e1 will be left blank. blank. Now let's leave blank. Now there is a successive movement from successive movement from e to one to e to two. So we implement this one by one. So it will become two. 
and the zero will be same. Now coming to B to G, there is a successive movement from B to two, and there is a massive passing from E to two. So this first field let's leave it blank, and we'll implement this two by one. So it will become three, and this two will be copied here since there is a massive passing. So it will become two. Now for E to four. There is a successive movement. So what we will do is we we'll leave it as that. We'll increment this b by one, so it will become four, and we'll copy this two as it is. Now let's come for the process one. So for e one one, there is no bar process passing between e two one and e three one. So it will be one for process one, zero for process two, and zero for process three. Now there is a successive movement from E11 to E12. So what we will do is we will implement this one by one. So this will be two, zero, and zero. Now we have left this plan. So what now we will say that this field is two. We will copy this two here. So E12 will become two, two, zero. And similarly we will copy this two. Here, so e two will become two p two, and similarly we we'll copy this two to here, so it will become two four. Now for e one p, there is a successive movement from e one two to e one three, so we we'll implement this two by one, so it will become p zero. Now for e one four. We we'll implement this by one, so it will become four. There is a massive pass between e two three to e one four, so we'll copy these values here. So it will become four, three, and two. In this way, a vector plot for each of the process and each of the event is maintained. Now, by seeing this, we can say that for each, uh, we can take any event. Let's say this for example. We'll compare this event since we have the uh, time step for each of the process: two for process one, two for process two, and zero for process three. That's the problem. The partial uh, ordering is eliminated, and here we can see we can achieve the total order. Now let us see the comparison between the vector blocks. There are four parameters on which we compare the vector block. The first we will say whether two vector blocks are equal, second not equal, less than, and one. So the condition for each one will be let uh, let P A and P B be the two vector plot. So if P A of I is equal to P B of I for all I, then we will say two vector plots are equal. Let's take an example. If uh, two 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 be the vector plot of first uh, plot first process and Two, two, two be the vector plot of second process. Then we will say that these both are equal. Not equal is just suppose it are equal. If any of P of A of I is not equal to P B of I, then we will say that uh, they are not equal. Let's take an example. Two, 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 and here let's take two, three, four. These are non-equal. Less than, as the name suggests, one vector plot is less than the second. So let's take an example. If this is one, two, two, and here it it will be. Uh, let's take it four, two, two, and here it will be one, two, two. Then we can say that this vector plot is less than that. And for the contrary, uh, neither first of the vector plot is less than second or not. Second is less than first. So let's take an example. Let's take one, two, three, and here let's take as four, one, three. Here, this one is less than four, and this two is greater than one. So these processes are constant. So guys, this was all about vector plot. And in the next video, we are going to see about the mutual exclusion and deadlocks in distributed systems.
system and if you like our channel do like and subscribe and if you want us to shoot any videos or you have any queries just write in the comment box or you can even mail us at gravity.gmail.com and this was Ayush signing off thank you